Well, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. This morning I want to uh, kind of continue looking at a little bit of what we were talking about on Wednesday. Um, when Saul of Tarsus was on the road to Damascus carrying out what he thought was the will of God and on his way and on his journey he said he saw a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun and you know that's one of the things that uh, God has done in our lives that he came and he he showed himself greater than um, whatever life, no matter how good or bad it was, that he came into our lives and um, rearranged the furniture, so to speak, changed things about. And then you get to uh, um, grow up in, in him and experience uh that life that God has set apart for us. Amen. But one of the things I want to look at this morning and kind of continue with this is that I, I really personally can't get away from Romans chapter 8 and the, the cry of the creation, the groan of creation and what God's purpose is and what God has intended all along and the reason that he made mankind to begin with. Amen. That God made mankind so he could have a family, right? Sons and daughters of his nature, of his character, of his likeness. He would carry out, um, you know, not, not just carry out, uh, you know, what we know in Christianity of um, deliverance or making things better and all that, but really to have that family that he intended from the beginning. Amen. That God's looking for a people like... Uh, you know, if I can say this, if you can understand what I'm saying, you know, Adam fell, so Jesus came and he uh, brought that redemption for our lives that we can um, move out of the divot, so to speak, right? Adam fell, we come back up out of the divot, divot to begin to live that life that God always intended. Um, through Christ Jesus, amen. Um, I mean, God did not make God did not make Adam. Of course, we we never have technical difficulties till today when, when you have company or right, or guests come and it's like, why isn't everything working? It's God's way of humbling us, amen, or keeping us humble. Hallelujah. So anyway, but. Um, God never intended for man to fall and never intended for mankind to die. He always intended for man to live the way he desired. Now I can't even hear it. <laughs> oh, well. Hallelujah. So if you turn with me this morning, I, I want to read in Romans chapter 8. I, I like to read the whole chapter. Um, I, I kind of want to... <coughs> I don't even know where to begin. I would like, like I say, I'd like to read the whole chapter, but uh, I won't do that this morning. Um, I, I kind of want to get to my point and, um, and go from there. Amen. So uh, let's see, where do I want to? Let's start Romans 8. Let's start with verse 14, okay? Romans 8, verse 14. As many as are led by the Spirit of God. See, that's a key, isn't it? That we're not trying to tell God what to do. He's trying to get you and I to follow Him. Amen. Led of the Spirit of God. Now, there are many spirits, there are many voices in, in the creation, right? But God is trying to get you and I to know and hear His voice today. If you hear my voice, harden not your hearts, it says in Hebrews. Amen. But for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God or the children of God, right? And this word here is the Greek word weos, and it has to do with mature sons. Or low. Like you have a little two-year-old, right? And the two-year-old doesn't always listen, does it? Right? And I can't tell you that I always listen to God, right? 
But he's trying to get you and I to grow up that we would listen to him all the time. Amen? Okay. Um, for you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. Okay. Oops, sorry about that. You have not received the uh, spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, all right? Whereby we cry, Abba, Father, okay? And the spirit of adoption, I already to told you and showed you, it's not adoption like the Western world. We are not adopted into God's family. We must be born again, right? You must be born again. According to John, it says, born again, born of the water, born of the spirit. Amen. And the adoption here is the placing of a son. God takes a son. It's like it has to do with heirs, right? When you have children and when they become of age, you place them where you want them to carry out the function of the family business, I'll call it, right? Remember Jesus, 12 years old, and when he's in the temple and the... And the, and the uh, all the people were asking him, you know, and, he's, and his parents came back and they were looking for him, remember? And they asked him, what are you doing? And he said, I'm about my father's business. At 12 years old, he already knew what the family business was, wasn't it? And it was to bring, right? It was to bring the presence of God in his people. Remember this? Hey, Jesus, show us the father. And what did he say? When you've seen me, you've seen the Father. The nature, the character, the likeness, the image, everything, right? Uh, this is what God is after in our lives, okay? But um, we've not received a spirit that makes us slaves again or causes us to fear, to miss out on what God is after, right? He didn't give us that spirit, did he? He gave us the spirit of sonship, the placing of a son, right? Watch. In another place it says this. He has given this the spirit of his son into our what? Heart. Whereby we cry, Abba, Father. See, just the fact that you're saying Abba, right? Father, Father, right? Is letting... I mean, you think about... It's letting him know. It's letting us know. Like, you know, I don't mean to be disrespectful, but who's your daddy, right? Do you understand that he is ultimately the Father, Right? I, I came from my mother and father, but I just came through them because what God has purposed in his people, right? He looked down through the porthole of time and he knew, he understood. He, he, he knew you'd be here today. He knew, he knew everything. He knows everything. And so therefore, this is why he calls us. This is why he's constantly telling us, you know, come up higher. I'm from above. You're from below. Look, in other words, a light from heaven, brighter than anything natural or the sun, right? What do you know brighter than the sun? The S-U-N, you know, I, I don't know anything, right? But somehow his light stepped into my life that I didn't see with my natural eyes or hear with my natural ears. His spirit, which is totally invisible, all of, all of a sudden became tangible, from the inside out. Know ye not that you are the temple? Uh oh, is it? Do we need the heat? We are you with me? So whereby we cry, Abba, Father, the spirit of sonship. There is a cry within us, right, to know him. John chapter 17, verse 3. This is life eternal or eternal life. To know, epi genosco, to know by relationship the one and only true God. God, it seems impossible, doesn't it? Oh, no, he made it possible by his spirit and his son, right? Jesus Christ, amen. Are you, are you all right this morning? Are you all right this morning? Okay, here we go. Verse 16, the spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. 
Amen? I, I like this. In the, in the uh, easy reading version, it says, And the Spirit himself speaks to our spirits and makes us sure, I like that, that we are his children. We are God's children. Amen? You ever have those days, uh, you know, I mean, you don't usually have them as you grow older or more mature in God. He loves me. He loves me not. I don't know if I am. I don't know if I, uh, I am a child of God. I don't know if I am a child of God. No, look, his spirit speaks to our spirit, doesn't it? And gives us that confident. I'm confident in this very thing that he who has begun a new work in us will do what? Perform it. See, I don't have to rely on me. I have to rely on him. Uh, yes, I have to follow. I, I have, you know, I have to, you know, not just go willy-nilly and go off the deep end, but look, we pursue him. I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling, that upward calling, right? We have to pursue him. And I think really, like, if, if we really understand this, it's one of our dilemmas we have today that we have to walk in this life and yet pursue. But look, Jesus said, he said, look, he said, I'm not from here. He said, I, I, I'm in heaven right now while he was walking in the earth. Right. But his thing was that he was moving by the father's spirit in his life. You and I, we have issues. Maybe you don't, but I have issues at times, okay? But like any good father who loves his children, he's constantly, always bringing us to himself. Because look, any good father, right? Any good parent, I'll even, I'll, I'll take out the gender aspect of it. Any good parent always wants their children to be like them. Not the bad parts of them. We recognize that. <laughs> the good parts, right? And he is good all the time. So everything that he has, he poured out into his son, the firstborn, right? That, like the book of Hebrews says, that he brings many sons, many children to what? Glory. What is glory? Glory is in some place over there. Glory is God's presence in our midst, where two or three are gathered together. Here I am. Now, we only know him in part, but that which is in part, when it becomes complete or full, I can't comprehend all that, but I believe. So therefore, I speak. I declare what God is after. Amen. I don't see everything under our feet, but we see Jesus, who's conquered it all, hasn't he? So here we go. Let's keep reading. Verse 17. And if the children, and if children, if we're children, then we're heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If, I like that conjunction word, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. Everybody knows that there's, look, Timothy, in the book of Timothy, it says this. If we suffer with him, we'll do what? Reign with him. In other words, look, there's victory. After battle, after the wars. Yeah. Amen? Look, somebody has to win. I've read the end of the book. Guess what? It's God and his people. His family wins. Amen? All right. So here we go. Verse 18. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Look, God isn't just trying to take you to glory, so to speak. God's trying to bring glory through his people. Look, in the book of Ezekiel, it says this. I, I love repeating it all the time. It says, and the sound of the cherubim's wing. Well, where were the cherubim's? They were on the Ark of the Covenant in Moses' church, weren't they? In the holiest of holies. And the sound of those wings were heard all the way to the outer court. Right? Watch this. As the voice of God. See, we like to work from the outside in, but God works from the inside out. And I'm, you know what my problem is with that? Is I can't always see it. 
You know, I think I know the things that need to be corrected, but God really knows the foundation of the things that need to be. Amen. So he can bring to light his glory. Uh, if we looked at it in from, from the Feast of Pentecost type of mentality, right? Look, when Jesus showed up and he became uh, 30 years old approximately there and he walked in the earth and all of a sudden when his ministry after being uh, um, led by the spirit into the wilderness, right? And he went out and he went out and healed the sick and he, you know, he multiplied the bread. He did all the things that he did. You saw a dimension of his glory, didn't you? Amen. It just like it was like light. It came out. Look, like when if we read, if we if we read in in uh, Malachi where it talks about um, the healing of his wings, the wings, the word there means the rays or the illumination. Right. The extremity, what it's what he's really trying to say is, look, God can release energy from an invisible point of view. I tell you all the time, look, there is music in this room. Can you hear it right now? No, but if I turn on a transistor radio, it can pick up an invisible signal. Well, guess what? The Spirit works the same way in you and I, that God wants to work through us. Amen? But the cool thing is, I, I get, you know, you're going to have to forgive me. You've never maybe heard me before, but listen, that God, the one who created everything, wants to live inside the center of his creation. Yeah. with all that peace and harmony of who he is. Yeah. How cool is that? What is man that thou art mindful of him, right? He said, this is the inheritance. This is what Jesus died for. Amen. This is what he desires you and I to press into. How do I press? just keep seeking his face there's no formula there's no answer cry abba father right you can do whatever you want god hears the groan right we don't know how to pray but the spirit giveth utterance amen are you with me this morning i i really do have a point where i'm trying to go here we go all right here's a here we are Amen. For the sufferings now, they're nothing to be compared to what God is after. Verse 19, for the earnest expectation of the creature or the creation waiteth for the manifestation or the illumination or that light of the sons, the children of God. Son has nothing to do with gender, has everything to do with spirit. Amen. God's children, both sons and daughters, illuminating. This is what the creation groans for. I don't have time this morning to go back to Psalms where it talks about the prisoner crieth to be what? Delivered from the pain of death. That's all God has ever been after, right? Look, I, I know, I know, I know this is like the deep end of the pool, but listen to me. Look, God made a garden. He said Adam and Eve in it, right? And right in the garden, what did he do? He put a tree that was a tree of life, and he put a tree that ended up being a tree of death. Knowledge of good and evil. And he said, choose you this day, which one you're going to want. And then he inserted a voice, a serpent, right? More subtle than all the other beasts that God had made, the Bible says. And all he was trying to get Adam and Eve to do, just like he tries to get you and I to do, is to listen to his voice and no other voice, not even my own. Amen. That's all he ever tries to do. How do I hear his voice? Oh, God. Uh, let me count the ways. I don't know. See, we're so used to that big booming voice that, you know, when someone, but Elijah knew all about the big booming voice, didn't he? And then when he hid in a cave, it was the what? Still small voice, that quiet voice. And not every quiet voice is God's, is it? <laughs> 
try the spirits and see if they be of God, it says in the book of John. All right, here we go. I'm, I'm getting off track here. Here we go. I'll never get done today. Okay, verse 20. For the creature was made subject, or the creation was made subject to vanity, not willingly. Wow, we're in this shape, not by choice. Not willingly. But, I love that. But, by reason of him, God, who hath subjected the same with hope or an expectation. See, God was not blindsided that Adam fell. How do you know that? Because the lamb was slain before the foundation of the world. See, God's so smart, he's like the best engineer there ever was. He incorporated it before it ever happened. Well, why would he do that? Because you and I, like me, I would have scrapped the whole thing and started all over. But that's not the way God works. I wish he did. But he doesn't. So now we become subject to what he chooses. Remember our first verse that we read today? Those that are what? Led of the Spirit are the what? Children of God. Sometimes he'll lead you into areas of our lives that we would never, ever choose. Come on. Paul, Saul of Tarsus, who saw that light greater than the sun, that one from heaven, right? 27 or 30 years he was in jail, prisoner. Doesn't seem right. But I didn't think it was right that Jesus had to go to a cross. I mean, if I'm looking on the surface of right and wrong, right? But he did. So that you and I could inherit everything that he has promised. And better than promise, purposed. Because if God purposed it, it shall happen. It's not determined on when I'm alive in the corporate time, right? In the space-time dimension. It's not, right? Come on, we can read Hebrews. All those that went before us, right? It says they what? Wait to be perfect or complete. The words really means complete. And what makes the family complete? Like Ephesians says, those that are in heaven and those that are in earth. Hallelujah. God's after something, isn't he? What's he after? He's after a family. Hallelujah. All God ever wanted was a family for himself, a body for his son, and a temple for his spirit. The book of Revelation says this. It's very clear. God dwells in man. Acts says not in temples made with, not in buildings. What brings God's presence into this building? People. Yeah. Amen. All right. Uh, uh, but look, he's subject the same in hope or with expectation. Why? Because the creature itself also shall be delivered. There's a promise. I mean, come on. I, I, I preached this message at Christmas in Massachusetts when I was there. Look, wrong cannot triumph forever. At some point in time, what we see has to turn around. Why? Because God never intended for life to be like this. It's subject to vanity, emptiness, vainness. All God ever wanted was life evermore. Amen? God life, Christ life, His life. Adam's life is what long lived to, you know, Adam lived, what, 900 and some years, I think. I mean, he in God's economy, where, where Peter said a day is like a thousand years and a thousand years is like a day, Adam died before the day ended. Are you with me? Okay. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. What is the creation groaning for? 
the manifestation, the illumination of the children of God. Why? Because look, God, he gathers, he calls, right? Look, he started with Abraham, didn't he? And before you knew it, you had a whole nation called Israel, right? And now God started with a man named Jesus. And now you have a whole globe, right, of what he's after. It's not perfect because it's not complete. So this, this, for this reason, what do we do? We seek, we cry, we groan, don't we? We pursue, we press. I think Romans in another spot, he writes this, he goes, he says, put on Christ, right? Put him on. Well, I already have him in my life. Right, I get that. But what he's trying to get us to understand is putting all on. Look, hey, master, what's the most important commandment? Love the Lord thy God with all. Right? All. And you remember Peter? Peter was a smart guy, wasn't he? He said, Lord, we've given up all. He said, no. No, you haven't, not yet. God's ever, after every single bit of our lives. He wants everything in our lives. And the worst part is Christianity, God forgive me, Christianity has polluted so many things. They've interpret, interpreted that into meaning, hey, give your money, give this, give all that stuff. And yet this pendulum swings the other way where no one does anything like that, right? No, look, God is after a people whose heart is captured by him. Amen. Amen. <coughs> their heart, their minds their whole beings. Verse 22, for we know, this is, this is what I was, for we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together up to this very moment. If you read some of the other, if, if I don't have time, I'm not going to look at it right now, but I'll get to where I really want to go. This whole portion of this verse is about birth pains. Now when uh, we know it, we know it in the human context, so, uh, we relate to it much more. Uh, we, we can see it in, in the animal kingdom also, right? But when a mother goes into labor, right? It's not easy. It's painful. It's a struggle, isn't it? And look, the church, as we know, is looking to what? Birth these children, aren't they? God's church, his bride, his... The new Jerusalem is the what? Mother of us all to birth this manifestation, this illumination, right? But it travaileth in pain together. And look, so if the creation's groaning, right. this is where you and I should be. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruit. The first fruit. See, the creation doesn't know everything that the, and not that we know everything, <laughs> we far, most certainly don't. But, I mean, you can meet people all the time that don't even know anything about God or they don't even want to know about God. But God has put the first fruit or the first seed, right, the seed of Christ into our lives. That's, that's why we cry, Abba, Father, right? We understand the first, it's all about Him. It's His life, right? He gave us the first fruit of the Spirit, when you plant a seed, what's the seed have to do? It has to grow up. And once it grows up, what's it have to do? It has to produce fruit. Well, the fruit that it's producing, the seed is Christ, right? The seed of Christ. Jesus, he, he's the first. He's the, he was the first one. Got, he's the head of the family. Yeah. Amen. See, I know I would mess up a lot of people, and forgive me if I mess you up, but look, people will argue about whether Jesus was married or not. I'm going to tell you he was, but not to a natural woman. 
He was married to the church, and this is how we became his children, his bride, his church, right? And I know it might be sounding like a word game for a lot of folks, but listen, no, it's genuine in the sense of this, that God has come into our lives by his spirit. And this is why the prophet Isaiah said when, uh, when he was prophesying with the Lord, I and the children that you gave me. I mean, this is the same prophet who prophesied that a virgin would have a baby. And I don't know, six or 700 years later, it happened. Well, I'm pretty certain that Isaiah was long gone. And a lot of folks that thought Isaiah went to his grave as a false prophet. But just because it doesn't always happen when we think, right, doesn't mean it's not true. And I know, I know, I get it. A lot of things are said that are passed off as God, but it never really passes the litmus test of it being God. Amen. Okay. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruit of the spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting, 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 right? Waiting for the adoption to know the redemption of our body. Amen. Okay. So turn with me to Matthew 24. Matthew 24. Are you all right this morning? I hope I'm not losing you. Verse 1. I'm not going to read this whole chapter. It's a long chapter. I'd like to read it, but I don't have time. Okay. Verse 1, And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming, and of the end of the world? Amen. How many know the world ended then? Right? Because the whole economy of Adam came to an end when Jesus went to the cross and rose from the dead. Look, think about it. Romans says Christ dieth no more. He got up from the grave, didn't he? Now, I have never personally seen that. Right? I have not. But obviously he got up because why? He sent his spirit into our hearts. Are you with me? Yeah. And we can read the Bible, and if you believe, right? Okay. Verse, uh, oh, no, wait. That was verse 3. Okay. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, or Christians, I like to rephrase that, shall deceive many. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Right? Are you with me? Everybody's worried about the end. The end is like, you know, okay, here we go. So look, the disciples were the same way. Look, I'm going to mess you up. You ready? Everybody's looking for the end on a timeline, and I get that, okay? But Jesus said, I am the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning, and the end. In other words, this is what the finished product looks like. Are you with me? It's the nature and the character. Look, Peter wrote it this way. He says, he has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness or godlikeness. That's all God ever wanted was nature. You're trying to be God? No, 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 no. But I wouldn't mind being like him. Well, always remember this. A son or a child is always subject to the father. Come on, even Jesus, right? 
He was subject. I mean, if I read Corinthians, it says, look, after he has overcome all things, right? He says he takes the kingdom and he offers it up to the Father. Here, here, Dad, look what I've done. I've done what you told me to do. Hey, Pastor, that seems pretty wild and impossible. With man, it's impossible. But with God, all things are possible. So I think I'm going to run out and try to make it happen. I'll probably stumble and fall, right? No, let of the Spirit. Right? Follow. Are you all right? For nations shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. You ever have earthquakes in your life? Yeah, I have. Yeah. Now, I've never been anywhere where there was a real. Oh, I take that back. There was. I forgot. When we had one at work, when the, when the one in Quebec a few years back, I remember the walls around me started shaking. I was like, I was thinking the, one of my cube mates down, like, what are they shaking the walls for? But it turns out it was an earthquake. So actually, I have been in an earthquake. But it was just a little tremors. But sometimes that the sufferings of this world can be earthquakes, can't they? I mean, things can happen that you never expect, right? Now, you might get shaken, but as long as our faith doesn't get shaken, our hope and trust is still in God because his word still stands forever. Look, I could go down and read here a little farther. He goes, heaven and earth, heaven, earth can pass away, but my word will stand firm. It'll never pass away. In other words, it won't return to me void. For whatever I said, it will happen. And if no one believes, at least his children have to believe. Even though, it does. look, like most people might think you're crazy that you even believe Jesus exists. But if you've had a real relationship with him, even in the smallest sense, even if your own mind tries to tell you, you know. You remember that day when he came and he just... He met you. I mean, there was no words. There were no, he just met you. It was just like the down payment. It was like the engagement ring. Hey, do you want more? Come, come on. Let's get married. Let's have a ball. Let's have fun. Let's grow up together. Let's produce children, right? The whole thing, we don't get it. Like when we have a husband and wife, they have children, they have babies, right? It's their, what they produce, right? All God wants to do, watch this, is produce his character, his illumination, his light through you and I. And look, if we don't pursue him, it'll just be a message to us. It'll just become knowledge you know what knowledge does, the Bible says? It just puffs us up, makes us think we're something. But he, he, right, rejects the proud. And he gives grace to the humble. Why am I going through this? God, things aren't working out the way I thought they should. I read your word and it shouldn't say anything. Uh, follow him. Humility. Yeah. You want to know why? Because he loves us. He desires us. It's not that we're anything special. It's that he is. Amen. Well, watch this verse eight. Ah, sorry about that. I'm, my mind is just, are you with me? All these, verse eight, all these are the beginning of sorrows the word sorrows is the Greek word odin and it means a pang or a throw especially of childbirth pain, sorrow, travail Jesus said look all these things that are happening what we just read wars, rumors of wars I mean people get so caught up in like oh my god there's going to be a nuclear war and this. look he tells you and I not to get caught up into that stuff Right? A good soldier doesn't entangle himself with the affairs of this life, it says. Right? Look, 
We have to know what he's doing. If we use Elijah and Elisha as any good example, right, for a prophetic ministry and a prophetic people, right? Look, what did they, I think the coolest thing was when Elisha was walking along with the kings, right? They didn't even know he was in the camp and they're about to go to war, right? And there was no water. And they went and got Elisha, right? And he brought water. He brought an illumination from heaven, didn't he? When there was nothing else going on, they thought they were going to perish. That's all God ever wanted was a people to be, watch, a light. A manifestation. Not of themselves. God is not interested in me being Mr. Glow in the dark. The truth of the matter is, look, this is why Paul said this, right? He goes, that I might know the fellowship of his sufferings. <clears throat> Check me out of that one, right? So a pang, a throw, especially a childbirth. So I, I, I looked this up. I wanted to read something, right? Can I read this to you? Can you be early in early labor for days? Right? And I, I'll make a point. I'm almost done. Okay? I don't want to wear you out. Watch this. I just want to read this. I think this is pretty cool. Can you be, you know, anybody ever go on Google? Here we go. This is the beginning, because what did Jesus say? This was the beginning of sorrows. I just thought this was pretty cool. I can relate to this, all right? This is the beginning of what will most likely be a long, intense, and exhausting process. Jeez. It's been 2,000 years since Jesus walked on the earth approximately, right? But in God's economy, it's only two days ago. 1,000 years like a day, a day like a 1,000 years. Not to you and I. Because a lot of people come and go, right? But it's been a long, exhausting... And if I went to Peter, it says, where is the promise of his coming? Well, some men count slackness or mankind, Right? His promise is sure. Yeah. This is the beginning of what will be, most likely, a long, ex intense, and exhausting process. Pre-labor can last for hours or even days, especially for first-time mothers. Look, the earth, everybody say this with me, the earth has never seen the corporate body of God. They've never, in, in completeness. We've seen the head. But the earth has never seen all of his children in fullness. Right? What's Ephesians say? Unto the stature of the fullness of Christ. Now, if you understand Christ to only be Jesus, that's only half the story. Because Paul's laid it all out for you and I when he said, look at many members one body. First time mothers. It can be intense, long, laborious, painful. Early labor is not active labor, but it can be, watch this, uncomfortable and frustrating, even more so if you allow it to consume you. Man, all the troubles we have. Jesus said this. He, goes, he said, what did he say? He said, in this life, you're going to have issues, troubles, right? Tribulations, sufferings. You're going to have them. But be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Now, look at it on the surface, right? If we didn't get to read the book, right? He, went to, he got beat along the way. <coughs> hanging on a cross. If you be the Son of God, come down from there. He had to exercise the power that was in him. It took more power to stay on that cross than to get off of it. Because he had to follow the Father's will. Not my will, but thy will be done. Wow. 
seems so far-fetched, so way up. No, look, he gave us his spirit. If we go up and read the early part of Romans chapter 8, look, it was weak to do, it, it's, the flesh is weak, right? It, it's weak to do what he wants, but he gave us his spirit to be able to overcome and to carry it out. Wait, what if I still make mistakes? What if I still, well, we do, we do. I, I, I like to say, you know, when we make mistakes, hopefully it becomes wisdom because we learn not to do it again, right? But we can't always constantly give in to that craving of the lower nature when he's always already given us his nature and character, right? If we've been born again, born of the water and the spirit. If any man be in Christ, he is a what? New creation, a new creature. You're now alive by the means of God. He now deals with you from a father-son relationship point of view, right? Uh, Parent-children, we get that a little more. He no longer deals with us from the Adamic or the old that runs by our emotions or base philosophy. I just thought that was pretty cool, don't you? Pre-labor, frustrating, tough, first-time mothers. And Jesus said, these are the beginning of sorrows, beginning of birth pain. Well, what's he trying to birth? A son, a corporate son, a many-membered body. This is what he's after. And so therefore, watch, the creation groans. I don't know, I don't hear the creation groaning. Look, every time I hear... You know, you know, they blew up this church or they, or they uh, killed these people. They had a mass shooting over here. It's the creation groaning. Sure. No, that's a bunch of crazy people. Yeah, the creation is groaning. What's it groaning for? The light of God through his people to change everything. A sound that changes everything. Amen. Are you with me? Hallelujah. Turn with me to Revelation chapter 12, and I'm going to finish here. Revelation 12. I want to point this out, and then I'll be all done. Revelation 12, verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon, under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. I don't have time to tell you what all that means, but the crown speaks of the mind of Christ. Twelve is the kingdom principle of God. Here we go. And she being with child, okay, child, travailing in birth, and pained to be delivered. How many know that God wants to birth something? He, he wants to birth something in our individual lives. He wants us to be victorious in our individual lives, doesn't he? But more importantly, he wants us to be victorious corporately. See, this is the problem that the children of Israel never realized in the Old Testament. They never, ever got it. We saw glimpses of it, right? When they all, when, when Joshua got them to all the march around and get the walls of Jericho to fall down, Right? Not one of the people, look, he said, everybody, you keep quiet until I tell you to shout. Nobody got out of line. They listened. And what happened? Come on. I, I, I get it. I, I, I understand the physics that a, a, a loud enough sound with enough vibration can cause walls to fall down. And I, I get all that. But the reality is, is God intervened when they shouted. Amen? And walls came tumbling down. Come on, we can, we, we can understand that figuratively in our own lives, right? That, look, a shout of God in our lives can cause walls, separations, things. Look, and if we really understand, watch this, are you ready? A groan from the throne, right? We groan to be clothed upon. This is what he's talking about when he's in Romans. A groan that can cause walls, separation, veils, things to disappear. Like, if there's scales on our eyes and we can't see, that the eyes of our understanding would be enlightened, illuminated. Whew. 
a light went off. I understand. Here we go. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon. Right? The first book, the serpent was on the ground. The last book, he's walking. Here we go. Having seven heads, ten horns, and ten crowns upon his head, and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and cast them to the earth, and the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. <laughs> Pretty cool. Look, the enemy is always trying to destroy what God produces in our lives. Always. Here we go. And she brought forth a man-child, a son. I don't have time to break this all out, what this really means here, man, child. But it actually means one that is strong for lifting. Now, when I was a little kid and I went to church and I heard the preacher say strong for lifting, my mind was like strong for lifting because that's the only thing. And all of a sudden one day God was just talking to me. No, lifting, ascending, a people who ascend. Look, Jesus didn't go anywhere. But yet his spirit was ascended into the realm of the heavenlies. Amen. You know what, I, what our struggle is, folks? It's because we live at such, we, we allow the distractions of this life to, me, me too. I mean, the, Jesus said this, look at the parable of the seed. He said, look, he said that the thorns and the thistles that were in the garden and choked out the seed were the what? cares of this life and and he by no means was you know just you know oh willy nilly you know no and he wasn't talking about that he's look set your mind on things above does that make any sense to you everybody with me it's easier said than done isn't it you have to purpose it you have to follow him you have to be led by him here we go and she brought forth a man child who was to rule. I, I, I like to use that word. When we hear rule, there's another thing, right? It's a people who have ascended, right? Rule, shepherd, feed. A shepherd, he knows how to rule, right? The sheep, but he also leads them into what? Green pastures, right? Feed, green pastures, right? Nothing better than the green pastures of God. Here we go. To rule all nations with a rod of iron strength. Iron, right? And her child was caught up unto God in his throne. Look, the birth pains, the groaning. It's to bring forth a many-membered son. God has sent forth his son, the spirit of his son, into our hearts, our lives, whereby we what? Cry, groan, Abba, Father. And the reason for it is, watch this, not my choice. I didn't ask for this, right? I, I could be, you know, somewhere else today. But look, it's because the creation groans. It groans for the manifestation or the illumination. Or in other words, it really, it, even though it doesn't look like it, like there's so much bad that goes on. But like, you know, there's, it's day and night in the earth. At the same time, there's a lot of good in humanity, but there's a lot of bad in humanity. And, and, and it's, a, it's, it's a, a perplexing situation. It can be frustrating at times, right? But look, it's because there's a cry, a groan from the throne. I don't have time, but if we went down and read the rest of Matthew 24, when's this going to happen, preacher? This is what the disciples said. He said, no man knows the hour. No man knows the day. But he goes on and tells them the story. Just be ready. Ready like if I was coming like a thief. For if a good man had watched, his house wouldn't have been broken into. He always puts these together. The travail, the thief, and a people who cry out for God. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Amen? I don't know about you, but I thank God every day that he chose us. He said, I loved you before you loved me. 
And all he asks us to do is now love the Lord thy God with all my heart, everything that's in me. Pursue him, seek him, desire. Are you turning into some religious nut? If my religion is pure, if it's what God is after. Because look, I need real answers at times, don't you? Well, if I need them, the creation really is looking for them. Amen? Well, praise God. Let's stand. Hallelujah. I could go on for hours, and I won't. Thank you, Jesus. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Lord, we love you, and we praise you today, God. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your life. We thank you for your spirit. Hallelujah, Father. We know the creation groans, God. So, God, we, we must, Father, groan within ourselves. Father, desiring to know you and the power of your resurrection, Father. That everything, oh God, that needs life, that you would breathe into it, into our lives, Father. Dissipating all the darkness that does not belong. Hallelujah. A light from heaven brighter than the sun, above the sun, God, above anything natural in our lives, that the glory of your name would be known and heard. Hallelujah. Lord, we love you today. We praise you. And God, as this people goes, I, I, I pray, I pray, God, that your spirit would stir their hearts, gather them unto yourself, that your name would be glorified. Hallelujah. We praise you, Jesus. Amen and amen. Hallelujah.